What's up guys, Jared back. So I've got Paranoid Android 3 Plus loaded up on my HTC One. Now I did do an initial video back when the HTC One came out, um, you know, just kind of showing you Paranoid Android actually running on it. It's always fun to see initially. But at that time, it really, really wasn't stable, um, you know, as were a lot of different custom ROMs at that time. So after a while, I usually wait quite a while, like several months after um, the release, the initial release of these like true, super sophisticated type custom ROMs, um, just because because the stability for them is just so gross that I just cannot stand using them, uh, such as MIUI, for instance, uh, for the HTC One at the moment is just, in my opinion, not even worth uh, uh, playing with. That said, um, I recently flashed it, it's been a couple of months, lots of updates down later, and um, we've really got a quite a stable build on our hands. Uh, I will say right off the bat though, the only bug that I personally have encountered so far is the front facing camera. The front facing camera has got this crazy green hue going on. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but myself personally, uh, that really sucked. But the thing is, I don't really use my front facing camera all that often, it's more my rear facing camera. So it wasn't, a bit of, uh, wasn't really a big issue for me, and that's the rear facing camera is performing just fine the application no force closes nothing no you know auto focusing issues anything like that so so that's good so for me this is more than um a daily driver this is like something i could actually keep on my phone for a while uh all right so with that out of the way um let's go ahead and get into the rom so for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering what the hell um oh you can see me hello there uh what the hell is a custom rom jared what is paranoid android so paranoid android is a custom firmware now with the beautiful thing about Android is that um, you can root it which is like you know God, I hate using this as, as an example or as a comparison but it's like basically the Android equivalent to uh, jailbreaking your iPhone uh, that said we can do a lot more though um, and so a lot of developers out there kind of team up and they create these really cool custom firmwares which is what your phone originally runs as a firmware uh, but they've got all kinds of different cool tweaks and things like that a lot of these uh, custom firmwares or custom um, ROMs true custom ROMs are bait from built from the AOSP, uh, which is Android Open Source Project. And um, so basically you're getting stock Android with a ton of really, really, really great, useful customizations and features on top of it. Uh, that said, you'll notice right here, even though I've got an HTC One, it's got this sort of tablet mode sort of setting. So this is because the DPI has been changed. Um, so as you can see, we've got the split screen, makes it very easy to access and see all your different settings, things like that. They've got that licked, so I'm loving that. Um, furthermore, Halo, uh, Halo has been introduced to Parent and Android not too long ago, which is this little sort of thing that you can see on the right hand corner. And so if I was to tap that, if I have any notifications, such as it's saying, yes, so, you know, look, uh, your last notification was the fact that you, it was searching for um, a Wi-Fi network. Well, it brings up that application, which is basically my, you know, my wireless network um, selection screen, whatever here. Uh, so if I have any text messages, emails, things like that, and I just kind of click on that, it'll open the application up for me, which is really convenient for a lot of people. However, for me, um, I've been trying to get used to it, and I'm just so used to, whoops, I'm so used to, um, pulling down my status bar and checking, you know, my notification tray and just clicking to get into the uh, full application itself. So uh, I'm still trying to get used to the Halo uh, feature, uh, but it, I mean, it's really cool. A lot of people love it. Uh, myself personally though, this, it's just it's just moving my thumb up a little bit more to access my notification trace so I'll probably eventually end up uh, disabling it just because it makes no sense to me personally but to a lot of other people uh, it might make a lot of sense um, furthermore let's go ahead and jump into the settings again Oh yeah, by the way, uh, we've also got this here in our quick settings. So you can change the DPI of your display on the fly. Uh, so you can change the overall look of things as well as we've got pie control. Uh, so if I was to get into, um, let's see, I'll get into settings here and I'll show you pie control. Those of you that are aware of pie control, this is nothing new to you, but there's gonna be a lot of you that aren't uh, aware of what pie control is. So we'll go ahead down here and click on the trigger area. I've got it set to none right now, but I'm gonna click on uh, normal. So if I swipe up here, this is Pi Control basically here. It's a bunch of on-screen buttons. So you've got, you know, back home, recent tasks or applications as well as uh, search and your settings button. Now, for some reason, um, it's not displaying right now. I think it's because I've disabled it, but generally it'll give you a bunch of uh, additional information like the wireless network you're on, date and time, any notifications that are waiting for you, as well as your battery level. Um, so a lot of people really like that, but for me personally, um, I can't stand it on devices that already have 
physical buttons put in something like a nexus 4 it makes a lot more sense to me because then you can get rid of that uh button bar that soft button bar down there at the bottom and uh, you know kind of regain some more screen real estate and when you need to use the back or home key or anything like that you've got this hidden pie control that you can just pop out of anywhere around the screen you can just set it anywhere so that's kind of cool some people like it some people don't some people even with these capacitor buttons on them um still love the um uh, pie control i just see no point to it because it's a lot quicker to access the buttons from here than having to swipe up sometimes and miss the trigger area and it not really work. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable that because like I said, I don't like it on devices that uh, already have physical buttons. Um, various different uh, locks. Actually, you know what? Let's jump back into toolbar. So this is actually, uh, we got a bunch of different controls here. So you can change the colors of things and you know, the circle battery indicators you can see that I have there. Um, change around the quick, uh, uh, the quick settings, tiles here, things like that, all kinds of really, really great stuff uh, in here, which is actually pretty standard across a lot of different custom ROMs. You can do a lot of these things here. Uh, as far as the Halo goes, which is this thing there that I was showing you guys earlier, um, and apparently it backs you right out of whatever application you're in, um, you know, it, it's cool, and you can do a bunch of different things to it, settings, you can reverse it and change the size of it, and uh, pause active app, things like that. Again, I'm probably going to eventually kind of disabling it in the future, so um, that's just something for you guys there. Uh, and here's the different pie control settings here. So you've got a lot of different pie control settings here. You have the alignment, the size, the style of it, so on and so forth, the gaps between the different buttons, things like that. So, you know, it's kind of cool. A lot of people like it. Uh, me, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I think it's really innovative personally. Um, Paranoid Angels was the first to come up with that, and then a lot of other uh, custom ROMs kind of copied it. <laughs> so, um, lock screen, lots of different uh, options here for lock screens, maximum widgets, things like that. Uh, hybrid properties is where they kind of really got popular, got known for their um, innovation, uh, Paranoid the, the team parent and Android guys. Um, so in here you can do a lot of things like changing around the interface, uh, not only just on the overall user interface, but as well as um, um, per app. So if you want to like that tablet style Google Play Store, uh, you can do that and you can customize that here. Um, although things may look different. Some of you guys like it, some of you guys don't. Um, for me, I just generally like having the actual smartphone experience. If I wanted a tablet experience, I would buy a tablet. <laughs> so, um, that's something for you guys. So if we jump back into launch, we've got a bunch of predefined things. So you can, in addition to the different UIs, like the DPI settings, the UI settings uh, to change the look of things, you can also change the colors per application as well. So if you wanted your, um, your Play Store to be like just blue and black as an example, you can do that or blue and red or you know white and black. You can do all kinds of cool modifications uh, to the overall look and feel of all your applications and throughout the system itself. Uh, and a bunch of predefined ones, stock UI, recommended UI, tablet UI, fablet UI, and a different type of tablet UI. I'm not really, haven't really looked there. I generally don't mess around with those things on Paranoid Android. Uh, for me, I come to Paranoid Android just for a couple of different tweaks and things like that that I don't really find in other um, custom ROMs. Um, but other than that, uh, pretty great. Uh, one thing I did want to show you guys, which you'll probably like, in a lot of different custom ROMs, they always have this little advanced uh, option there. And um, that's because every single phone has different sort of maybe needs or abilities that others don't. So how about a... Uh, haptic, I'm sorry, feedback and sensors, pretty standard stuff across all the different ROMs for all different phones. But for this particular one, we get into touchscreen and we've got some pretty cool little options in here. So a lot of you guys are aware of that HTC logo button, uh, menu button hack. Well, uh, you don't need to flash any custom kernels to do that now. A lot of these custom ROMs are um, including that particular hack in there. So if, as this one, as you can see, I've got it enabled and it enables the HTC logo's upper part to act as hardware menu button. So that is that, you know, basically that hack that we were talking about. Uh, we also have long tap to sleep so you can just kind of long tap uh, the upper part of the HTC logo and it puts the button uh, the device to sleep which is really convenient for a lot of people out there we also have the different wake methods so uh, in this particular instance I have sweep over the buttons which are those ones down there so if I was to go like this hopefully it'll work for me oops shoot that was to wake it I'm sorry <laughs> so here we go slide my finger across and it wakes the device up so you know if you have a case on or something like that instead of having to reach I know a lot of you guys hate that HTC keeps putting their bloody power buttons up there at the top and I have to agree with you guys um, that's a really easy and quick convenient way for you to be able to um, unlock your device and get into it uh, so that's just some of the cool features about this ROM uh, stability as far as this ROM is concerned um, it's been really really great so far uh, I haven't had any issues no force closes nothing um, no slowdowns or anything like that battery consumption has been um, for me 
pretty darn good. However, uh, the past couple of days, now I'm keeping in mind that I've been running this for a couple of weeks now, but over the past couple of days, as you can see, we're on 17%. Um, I really haven't been using the phone. I've just been playing, you know, keeping to myself uh, during the weekend, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've been doing nothing but just keeping to myself, um, playing Xbox, things like that. So I really haven't been using my device a whole lot. That said, though, uh, as a lot of you guys know, I always have Wi-Fi and or data connected. I'm pulling down two internet accounts, um, a couple different social networks, you know, some light phone calls here and there, text messaging, things like that. So very, very minimal use uh, with my device over the past four days or so. Uh, that said, though, you know, two days, 12 hours uh, with only about an hour of screen on time, really. But, you know, if that gives you any indication as to, you know, what it's, uh, what kind of battery life you can get out of it with minimal usage, um, you know, immediate, like moderate to heavy usage, you can, you should be able to get through a day uh, or at least a better part of the day for that matter. So anyways, guys, that is Paranoid, Paranoid Android uh, version 3 plus for your HTC One. I'll be posting a link in the description below so you guys can go and download it and use it right away for those of you that are obviously rooted and have your bootloader unlocked uh, thanks for watching as always for those of you that are wondering before you ask in the comments this particular weather widget I believe it's called eye in the sky uh, the wallpaper that I'm using behind it I believe if you go to the Play Store and search for um, Google now wallpapers you'll find something uh, and the icon pack theme that I'm using is called Goolers g-o-o-l-o-r-s I believe is what it's called and or how it's spelled and I believe it's just under two dollars in the Play Store uh, and I've been using it for a little while now and I'm absolutely in love with it also the launcher that I'm using is called action launcher it's a really great way to keep a very minimalistic functional middle uh, middle what am I thinking here uh, minimalistic functionality <laughs> of your device um so you got all kinds of great features and then just go check it out uh that's it like i said link in the description below click that likes button show me some love subscribe for more videos in the future and uh, follow me on google plus and twitter those links will be in the description below as well that's it for now though guys thanks for watching and we'll see you the next one cheers